So I'm going to talk about um, something that I'm very passionate about. And so when you're passionate about something, you put in probably way too many slides. So I may be moving a little bit fast uh, just to keep on time so you can go get your coffee for the next session. Uh, the next session is also the last session of the day. Um, so you'll be happy to know that. In any case, um, there are some definitions around uh, acute aortic dissection that probably are changing uh, as we're starting to figure out dissections a little bit better than we have in the past. But nevertheless, they, they kind of remain. And so an acute dissection um, is one that's diagnosed within 14 days of sy symptom onset and chronic for, uh, after 14 days. Um, when they're complicated, meaning they have problems, um, end organ ischemia and malperfusion are usually a part of it, refractory hypertension, rupture or impending rupture, unco uncontrollable pain, and then, of course, of the uncomplicated, which, uh, as, as you'll see, are managed uh, probably more medically still than, in, than anything else. There are two main classifications uh, that are used. Uh, the Stanford classification is very easy, uh, type A and type B. So type A is anything that involves the ascending, and type B is anything that's from the, the left of clavium down, so the descending aorta. Uh, DeBakey is a little more involved, but nevertheless one you should know. Uh, the type 1 is basically one that, that involves uh, the aorta from the, uh, from the root all the way down. Uh, and then type 2, which probably the less common uh, of these two that involve the ascending. And then the type 3, which is, involves the descending, you can break that up into A and B. Um, it's important to know that uh, one of the reasons we, we operate on patients, uh, whether it be endovascular or open, is because they have uh, vessel compromise. And so ischemia could be the kidneys, could be to the brain, could be to the uh, visceral segments. Um, and so there are some, some, some changes that happen. So you could have thrombus uh, or clot that kind of occludes the vessel and becomes a static um, uh, compromise of the vessel. You could have a dynamic component, such as something like this. So if you look at these images up top, you get a static image and you think there's good flow. If you look at the same images down below, the same patient, you see there's actually a, a dynamic obstruction of the visceral segments here. And we've actually taken uh, probably a little more aggressive approach towards treating these patients uh, and treat them endovascularly when we see this. Uh, the theory being that uh, a lot of patients, when you finally see that they have an elevated lactic acid or they have an elevation in creatinine, you already have uh, tissue compromise. Um, this is kind of the same idea here. Uh, and this, remember that the, the aorta is kind of a dynamic organ, uh, and you really see some, some huge changes that happen uh, when, when you see an aortic dissection here, a very dynamic flap on an uh, acute uh, uh, dissection. There are some uh, different flap configurations, um, and based on some pressure measurements, basically there's an ischemic and a benign configuration. As far as demographics, 89% of um, uh, patients uh, uh, greater than 60 with a history of arterial hypertension, that's uh, kind of what you see uh, come into the uh, ER. Acute dissections involving uh, the ascending aorta tend to be uh, younger um, and uh, with more, uh, and then those with more distal dissections, uh, mean age is 56 versus 64. And then uh, arch vessel occlusion can cause stroke in up to 5 to 10 percent of patients with type A. Uh, dissections. Um, the more common of the legs involved uh, is the left, and oligure and urea obviously may develop if you have um, a renal compromise. Uh, you can have sudden death, uh, which may be the presenting feature, uh, with free rupture of the false channel, although it's probably not the more common way they, they present. The ones that usually present to the hospital are ones that you're going to manage some way or another. Um, they also can have hypovolemic shock, um, which can be a presentation loss of blood from the uh, false channel into the periaortic tissues um, and an acute aortic insufficiency, insufficiency or cardiac tamponade. Uh, basically, one thing you need to remember with type A dissections is uh, for the first 48 hours, you should consider uh, a mortality rate of 1% per hour. Um, so uh, within two days, you can have a mortality rate of up to 50%. Yes, Mike? Which one has okay. The <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, for the operative repairs of type A dissections, although this is the primary way you treat them, um, the mortality rate is still pretty high, and so th you can consider about a 30% mortality rate for type A dissection repairs, uh, which mostly involve ascending replacements. Uh, some places nowadays, they'll change that a little bit in order to plan for the second stage, uh, which would be an endovascular repair in most cases. 
Uh, sometimes you'll have to resuspend the valve. But the key thing here is, uh, is doing the least possible to get the patient off the table the fastest uh, way uh, possible. Uh, complications of the procedure are stroke, bleeding, death, uh, multi-system organ failure, and uh, myocardial infarction, of course. Uh, symptoms and signs, uh, sudden severe uh, back chest pain uh, in 90% of patients. You can have abdominal pain, don't get fooled by that, uh, and that can be in 20 to 40 percent of patients, and it's part of the aortic tear or the mesenteric ischemia, but you don't have to have mesenteric ischemia when you have abdominal pain. Uh, hypertension in a good number of patients, 70 percent of uh, distal dissections, as I mentioned earlier, and less than 50 percent in proximal dissections. Um, syncope in 15 to 20 percent, uh, 20 percent of patients, and that could be from tamponade or carotid dissection, also paralysis. Um, so how do you diagnose this? Uh, chest x-ray is obviously not the best thing, but what you can see on a chest x-ray, you see a widened mediastinum, as you see there up on the right-hand side. Um, echo and CT are, are still good ways of doing that. Echo obviously is much better at a type A dissection than a type B dissection, um, but those are all modalities you can use. Um, and uh, T is obviously better than a transthoracic. Uh, gives you a, a, a more useful and accurate diagnostic uh, uh, result and uh, sensitivity uh, ranges in about 96 to 100 percent and specificity uh, about 86 to 100 percent. Again, what you see is a flap. Um, I'm going to move on to this next slide over here. Essentially, we use primarily uh, MRI for follow-up, but acutely most places are going to be doing um, uh, some form of uh, CAT scan. That's primarily because of the availability. And of course, in our case, um, the MR is run by cardiologists, and we know that they work limited hours. And so, uh, but the MR is actually a very useful tool, as you can see here, a much more sensitive um, tool than, um, than the other modalities. Uh, for aortic dissections versus MI, the two things you need to differentiate. So ST segment elevation uh, occurs rarely in acute aortic dissection, but can. Uh, but you obviously think that that's probably an MI if that's what they come in with. Um, thrombolytic therapy can be administered safely, obviously, in patients with ST elevation and no physical signs of aortic dissections. And then biomarkers are, can also be useful. A D-dimer can be pretty sensitive, and this is a paradigm you can use. Uh, so if you have a suspicion of acute aortic dissection, obviously chest X-ray, EKG, echo, physical exam, um, and then uh, your troponins and your D-dimers. You can rule out cardiac ischemia by EKG and troponins. Um, if your D-dimer is less than 500, um, then you can probably rule out a, a acute aortic dissection. Um, and if your D-dimer is greater than 500, you need to do a conform confirmatory test, but um, a dissection is uh, likely a uh, reason for the chest pain. Uh, for type B dissections, uh, essentially um, the treatment is ICU pain control and anti-impulse therapy. Uh, labetalol is a good way, or esmol, whatever other drugs you, you usually use. Um, then you eventually want to convert to PO medications as they start transferring to the floor. Um, on discharge, uh, they obviously leave on antihypertensives, and you want to follow them up with CAT scan. Uh, Q3 months uh, times four scans. Uh, Q6 months uh, for two scans after that, and then uh, yearly um, uh, after that. The indications, obviously, we spoke about those already, uncontrolled pain, uncontrolled hypertension, bleeding, malperfusion, critical size. In the chronic phase, uh, aneurysmal degeneration of outer wall uh, false lumen is the principal reasons for uh, complications and treatments. Uh, the groups at risk are those who have continued patency of the false lumen flow uh, and partial false lumen thrombosis, which from the IRAD was shown to be one of the highest risk factors for uh, expansion. Uh, but overall, if you look at the numbers, 40 to 50 percent uh, will require some form of treatment down the road. Now, if you look at uh, the patients as far as their management, um, type A dissections, as we talked about, all go to surgery. Type B dissections go if, they have comp if they're complicated by either a retrograde extension into the ascending aorta or um, some of the, the other uh, five complications we spoke about. Um, medical management is reserved for uncomplicated acute type Bs. Um, a stable isolated aortic arch or chronic type B, and interventional basically uh, pretty much everything, and I, I think we'll be, probably be heading over into type A's down the road. 
the treatment for uh, type B aortic dissection, uh, most institutions still favor a complication-specific approach, uh, meaning you try medical therapy first, uh, and unless they have some of the complications that uh, we mentioned, then you would go into some sort of interventional or uh, surgical approach. Uh, contemporary operative mortality rates for elective uh, surgery range between 0 and 27 percent, obviously depending on the center of the experience, but may exceed 50 percent in a complicated acute uh, uh, aortic dissections in emergency conditions. And I'd go back to what Dr. Azizadeh said, when you're doing these in the middle of the night with the wrong staff, I'd say the mortality rates can probably be even higher. Uh, the third available treatment option, TVAR, uh, basically propelled by the desire to induce aortic remodeling by sealing the proximal entry tear. Uh, overall, in hospital mortality for type B dissections is about 30 percent. Uh, if surgery is performed uh, within less than 48 hours after initial symptom mortalities, uh, the symptoms, the mortality can be uh, close to 40 percent, and after that, um, actually, the mortality rate goes down. That's probably different when you talk about endovascular. This is only based on open surgery. Um, this is from the IRAD, uh, essentially comparing uh, the different managements of a, a type B or dissection, medical management very much paralleling en endovascular uh, therapy. And of course, surgical at the bottom, the, uh, the survival is much poorer. As far as medical therapy, you need to maintain the systolic blood pressure between 100 and 120 millimeters of mercury, maintain heart rate uh, at or below 60 uh, beats per minute. And uh, the IRAD data basically shows that 73 percent of patients uh, are still managed conservatively, 10 percent in hospital mortality, 60 to 80 percent survival rate at four to five years, and four to 40 to 45 survival rate at 10 years, so not too bad. The timing of stent grafting, uh, if you do it acutely, uh, patients uh, seem to do a lot better. So in this study, at less than or equal to three months, they performed a lot better than um, in chronic situations. Uh, where you had complete obliteration and resolution of the false lumen following endovascular stent graft treatment uh, at in earlier periods of time, so 70 percent versus 38.5 percent. Um, I added these two studies in because I think these are the only two studies probably that are important for you to know. Uh, so the INSTEAD trial uh, at one year showed basically no benefit of um, uh, endografting versus medical therapy. Um, at uh, two years, uh, there was no difference in all-cause deaths uh, with medical therapy versus TVAR. Uh, there was also no difference in aortic-related death um, and uh, any other complications related to aortic disease. Um, the only thing where it was better was actually aortic remodeling, where you saw uh, aortic remodeling in 91.3 percent of patients, and I guess we'll see what that, what that means long-term. And those who didn't have stent grafting, it was 19.4 percent uh, remodeling. So that was really the, the main difference. The other trial you need to know is the ADSORB trial, which was the first randomized trial in acute dissection, uh, which compared best medical therapy with best medical therapy plus stent grafting uh, of the primary anterior in patients with acute, uncomplicated type B dissections. Uh, so primary study endpoint uh, was a composite of incomplete or no false lumen thrombosis at one year, aortic dilatation. Um, descending thoracic or abdominal aortic rupture through the one-year follow-up period. And essentially what it showed here, so results of max true lumen uh, uh, increased over time, uh, which was pretty significant up to the one-year period. Uh, and at one-year TAG plus BMT, so based best medical therapy per, uh, group has a statistically significant larger maximum true lumen than uh, uh, medical therapy alone. And then you see for the false lumen, uh, the false lumen did decrease significantly in the same, uh, in the same way. Um, and so one year primary endpoint uh, results for complete false lumen thrombosis in, in, in summary, essentially 30 tag devices plus uh, best medical therapy. Um, seven, uh, so 56 percent had, com had complete thrombosis um, versus um, 3 percent had complete thrombosis in be best medical therapy alone. Uh, so in conclusion, relatively rare pathology with grave consequences. Uh, medical therapy still works and should be the treatment of choice in uncomplicated dissections. Endovascular repair, better than open repair in acute type B dissection, um, but you need to be aware of the static versus dynamic branch uh, occlusions or, uh, or stenoses. Uh, and open surgical repair remains a valid option in chronic dissections. Thank you.